meeting of the, uh, the November meeting of the Sex Offender, Offender Residency Board to order, and uh, we'll start with the roll call staff, please. If I've captured the board members present, we have Ed Dorf, Faye, and Peter. Okay, thank you. I need to uh, call, entertain a motion to approve today's agenda. I so move. And a second. I'll second. Okay, moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the October meeting. I so move. Need a second. I'll second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, ayes have it. And we move on to our regular business. And I'm going to start by reading our script. We are now on the hearings portion of our agenda. There are nine applications before the Sex Offender Residency Board, and these are all quasi-judicial matters. It is the goal of the Sex Offender Residency Board to provide and conduct hearings that are both fair in form, appearance, and substance. To ensure that these hearings satisfy these goals, I am asking each member of the board to please confirm that they do not have a conflict of interest in each matter and that they have not received any ex parte communications for any of the matters before us on today's agenda. Through roll call, I'm asking each board member to answer by stating either I confirm or if you are unable to confirm, please state so and disclose the circumstances which apply to which matter. Roll call question one, I do not have an interest or conflict of interest in any of these matters. I do not. Peter? I do not. And I do not. Question number two, I have not received any communication from any person or party about this matter. Okay. I, do, I did not. And Peter? I did not. And I did not either. So for each hearing before us today, a decision will be made based upon the evidence and testimony presented to us. The board will either announce its decision tonight or take the matter under advisement and have a decision at the next board meeting. The board will make findings of fact and conclusions of law based upon the record before it. If anyone needs accommodation to hear or speak, please advise me now. Assistance will be provided if necessary. Okay. All right. We are now on to uh, item number one, uh, the application of Zachary Clark to, to 1274 Emily Street. Uh, Staff, do you have any further details regarding this application? I do not. Okay. And uh, the witnesses to testify today, I understand, will include Zachary Clark and Lisa Clark. Uh, Roy Clark is called in, perhaps uh, Roy as well. Um, <clears throat> I'll describe the process as that will be followed. Uh, the applicant will have the opportunity to present evidence and explain to the board why the application to live in a restricted area should be granted. Applicants may discuss treatment history in open <coughs> or request to discuss treatment in closed section, session. And uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Clark, I'll ask you if you have a preference to discuss your situation in open session or closed. Uh, I would prefer closed if possible. Okay. Um, then at this point, I will ask uh, Deanna to, uh, to move us all into closed session. And I, I, would, I would think that the only portion that would need to be in closed session would be any discussion of treatment. Um, the rest of the hearing would be, it would still be a public hearing, but okay. we would just have to reserve questions about treatment um, and any discussion about treatment history to the closed session. Okay, thank you. Zach? Yeah, that's fine. I don't have okay. an issue with that. All right. Uh, you'll have, uh, if there's anyone present, present who opposes or supports, uh, they will have three minutes to comment, and uh, the applicant will have five minutes to rebuttal if there's any opposition. And throughout the process, uh, questions may be asked. And uh, at this point, uh, Zach, I'm going to turn it over to you shortly here. Uh, you are making application to move to 1274 Emily Street, and we would ask you to start by uh, talking to us about uh, your offense and uh, why you want to move there, and then when we move on to treatment, we will go into a closed session. So I'll turn it over to you, Zach. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, my offense was one count of possession of child pornography. 
What had happened was I was going through a really rough patch of luck. I was drinking it, and I went into a chat room online. There were pictures being traded back and forth. I ended up downloading an explicit image of a minor. It was on my laptop. A few weeks later, the Green Bay Police Department came. They arrested me. They searched my house. I found the image on my computer. I was then sentenced to about a year and a half to three years in prison with one year of extended supervision. After my arrest, and once I was bonded out, I did move in with my parents at 1274 Emily. I believe it would be a place for me to go back to because my parents are really my main support system out there. I do have a very extended family that is all supporting me as well. But I feel my best chance of succeeding when I get out would be to move in with them with the love and support that they're going to offer. Okay. You had mentioned in your statement about your past employment, and you believe that your boss would take you back. Where is that? Yes. I worked at Rum Runners. It's a bar that is on Broadway on the west side of Green Bay. I worked there with him for about six months, and I also worked with his business partner. He has a landscaping company, and a few times I went out with him and helped him mow lawns and remove brush from people's property. I feel like if I was given the opportunity to go back, that they would take me back. Okay. And what's your anticipated release date? January 4th. Okay. Peter Fay, questions? I don't have any. Have you discussed the employment at the bar with your probation officer? I have not. Not at this point, no. Okay. Before we get into your treatment plan or treatment program, I'll call on Lisa. Did you want to speak? I just want to. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted the committee to know that Zachary is more than welcome to come back and stay with us. Okay. Roy, anything to say? Anything to add? I also agree with my wife that he's more than welcome. He stayed there with us prior to him going away. He's more than welcome to come back. Okay. Well, at this point, then, we will ask staff to put people into the waiting area so Zach can talk to us about his treatment program. Okay. I will just need to move everybody, and I'll let you know when I'm ready. opportunity to uh, talk to Zachary Clark about his treatment plan and uh, at this point I would uh, entertain a motion regarding his application. I would move address specific that he be approved for 90 days after his release date. And anything as far as what we would want to see after 90 days? Yes, I'll move that. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
90 days because they have to return in 90 days. And then we would like to, to see um, your treatment that you're enrolled in, in in a treatment program. So once again, Zach, uh, the motion is to approve your application to 1274 Emily Street, address specific for a period of 90 days. And then uh, we would ask you to come back to the, uh, the SORB uh, after the 90 days at the first meeting after 90 days has, has elapsed with evidence of your treatment plan. And I believe we also talked about employment, right, Faye? Yes. Okay. And uh, so the motion has been made. Uh, a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, motion made and seconded. Um, and are we doing this? Are we doing the vote electronically, or are we are, are we going to uh, verbally here? We can we can do it by voice. Okay, then uh, I'll call all in favor. Say aye. 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 Okay. And any opposed? And that carries unanimously. So, Zach, um, assuming you are released in 90 days, and and staff will write you a letter and, and give you all the information in writing on that. Uh, we'd be looking at you to come back to uh, the uh, SORB either in March or April with that evidence, you know, again, depending on your release date. Uh, and uh, other than that, uh, good luck to you. Okay, thank you. All right, we move on to application of Anthony Reed. Uh, applying to move to 900 Eastman Avenue, address specific. Uh, Anthony, yes. are you with us here? Uh, yes, uh, yes, it, it just hung up on me. It just hung up on me. Okay, uh, that's you said with fire tablet, I assume that, that's you then. Uh, yes, um, I'm trying to get video right now. Okay. Okay, there it is. Now we see it. I apologize. It just hung okay. up automatically. Okay, Mr. Reed, what we're going to ask you to do is start off by uh, talking to us about your offense and then uh, about your treatment plan. And when we get to talking about treatment, you have the option of doing it in open session as we are or doing it privately. Do you have a preference okay. one way or the other? Uh, it doesn't matter. Open, preferably. Okay, so why don't you tell us what's going on? Uh, talk, talk to us about your offense and and when you do, if there are any, uh, any victims involved, please uh, refrain from using any names. Copy. Uh, yeah, um, it all started. I lived on Anderson Road in uh, Schwabenach, or Anderson Drive. Uh, I woke up in the morning. Uh, my girlfriend was cooking breakfast. Uh, I was in the bed. Uh, and... <clears throat> The kid was in the room. She woke me up and started uh, started to mess with me. She told me that uh, get up, sleepyhead. Um, mom's cooking food. Uh, by then, I was I was already aroused uh, by wake up, waking up. Uh, I told her to go so I can get up. And uh, she said no, then uh, went, went under the covers, and that's when I put my hands on my, uh, I said private, or something. Uh, then I pushed her head down there. Um, then she put her mouth on it. Um, then she popped up and said, mom's coming. And I told her no. Uh, I stopped. I jumped up, got dressed. Um, went to the kitchen. Um, went outside to smoke. Uh, that's. I felt sick, like gut sick at the time. Um, what was I thinking? I, I've been, uh, uh, I've just been, you know, constantly thinking about that day. Uh, 
since it happened. I've been uh, down on myself a lot lately uh, for a long time. Um, I think about my nieces and nephews and my family a lot about what they think. Uh, I feel uh, a lot of regret, remorse, For a kid, my ex, uh, I loved him. You know, uh, I ruined my life because of one bad choice, and been trying to keep my mind on a new start. It's hard with the guilt that I hold over my head, you know. So. And when when was this offense, Mister Reed? Um, it was in. September 2015. And when did you go to court? Uh, my first court date, I believe, was September 20th, 2015. Okay. And were you sentenced at that time? No, I was sentenced in uh, 2017, in May. Of May or March. And, and the sentence, what was the sentence? Uh, the sentence was six in prison and 10 on extended supervision. 10 and years. When, when are you released from prison? Uh, September 7, 2021. Okay, where are you staying right now? Uh, I'm at the TLP on Shano Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, and uh, what's at 900 East? Uh, it's a, a house, um, a one-bedroom uh, apartment upstairs. Uh, it's right on the corner. It's really secluded. My next-door neighbor, he's an old neighbor from when I first moved to Green Bay. He owns his own business, uh, Joe Makovich Construction, or Makovich Roofing, I believe. So, will you be it's, employed? It's, yes, I uh, work at Red Lobster uh, full time, uh, 50 plus hours every week. So, I've been real busy uh, getting, I got my license back, I got a vehicle, I've been paying my restitution and uh, catching up on that SO, or my SOAR, uh, the SOP registry. I've been Paying on that, uh, helping my folks around the house. Um, yeah. Hey, talk to us about your treatment program. Uh, I completed uh, SUD-1. That's a drug and alcohol uh, pack, pack it with a social worker one-on-one -on -one, um, in Kettle Moraine. Uh, I... I'm currently referred to uh, Hanger. That's the SOT um, a treatment. And I start my first session on sept no, uh, November 23rd of this month, uh, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Um, the whole time I was in Kettle Moraine, uh, I wanted to do this the treatment so I didn't have to do it out here, you know. So, cause I'm, I'm a, I knew I was gonna be busy, right? <clears throat> so, uh, the pandemic hit, and everything was shut down. There was no movement for a long time at Kettle Moraine. So the time that I had got uh, uh, accepted to do it uh, by then it was already three months to release so yeah I worked the whole time while I was in prison uh, numerous jobs um, so yeah I got a full-time job out here so 
Okay. Uh, other board members, questions? Uh, Ed, I also just wanted to um, remind you that we do have law enforcement on the call. Uh, I know. Yeah, I was going to do a call on him in a minute. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Commander Abel, any, any comments, concerns, please? The uh, criminal complaint in this uh, case, uh, the victim had said that this happened more than uh, just one time. Just wanted to point that out. The board. Okay, thank you. You have a comment on that, Mr. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, it never happened more than once. Uh, I just, you know, plainly, you know, stated it one time. And how old was the victim? Uh, five, I believe, five years old. Do you have anybody here uh, to speak for you or uh, in opposition? Anybody here to speak for or in opposition to? Uh, Mr. Reed's uh, application. I do not have anybody on record. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to take the responsibility for myself, my own actions. So. Again, uh, my thoughts are that that it, it sounds like you've done a lot of positive things, but we would, I wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't know that you were actually in treatment and had a report from you know, the person that you're receiving treatment from. Okay, yeah. So at this point, would, does anyone care to make a motion regarding Mr. Reed's application? Has your, has your patient officer, or has anyone said how long it will be before you get into treatment? Um, I start my first class uh, November, 23rd on Tuesday. That's that's right. I'm sorry. I, I forgot that. I'm not. Okay. Um, I would like to move, um, move um, address specific, but for 60 days, and that you bring you know, um, a report or documentation of your treatment. Okay. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded uh, to approve address specific for, you said 60 days? Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. And opposed? I am opposed. Mark me as a, as a no. But that passes. So uh, you are approved for 900 Eastman Avenue, uh, address specific for 60 days. Uh, you will be uh, expected to come back uh, with evidence of your treatment program after, after that 60 days expires. Uh, okay, um, do I take it uh, personally to the City Hall or do I report back on a Zoom visit? Well, the, the meeting, it'll be determined later on whether the meeting's going to be in person or Zoom. You, you'll get a letter in the mail on that. Uh, Okay. Uh, but bring the documentation here. As soon as you get documentation from your treatment program, you have that sent in to the city. Okay. Right away. Okay. Right Got away. you. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not going to miss a treatment. I'm not going to miss a class. I'm not going to miss a beat. I'm really determined to change my life around. Six years did it for me, especially the two years in county, so. Okay, well, good luck and we'll see you in 60 days. I appreciate it, guys, thank you. All right. All right, we move on to the application of, of Jason Hall. Is it is it Hall or Hall? How do you pronounce it, sir? You're on mute, sir. It is Hall. Hall, thank you. And. Uh, this application to uh, 520, 425 5th Street. Uh, you were here a month ago and we asked you to come back. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Uh, you asked for any updates on uh, my appeal process? 
Yeah, so and that's what I meant. I was waiting to receive a letter from, you know, either my old appellate attorney or my new appellate attorney. I have not received one. I called the State Department Public Defender's Office uh, yesterday. They had not received anything from the appellate court. Apparently when I, when they looked at it and I re-looked at it, it went to the uh, department to decide whether or not I receive a new uh, appellate attorney and I have not received anything, any word from them. I don't know what's going on. I was supposed to receive a phone call back from the state public defender's office today, but have not. I'm trying to find out what's going on. Can uh, one of the other board members shed any light on this? I, I, I guess I didn't see a notation about uh, waiting for something from the appellate court on this. I, I guess is there it, more to this way that, that you can shed light on? It, it's in a it appears that because he was convicted of, and please correct me if I say something wrong, was convicted of a crime, but he's appealing it. He's That's cannot, correct. he has not taken um, any um, treatment because that would be admitting that he did commit a crime. So we, we approved for 30 days in hopes that something would be resolved, but that has not happened. Okay. And I think that um, my feeling is that, that we, we should extend for at least, you know, either 60 or 90 days so that he can remain living where he is, but I wouldn't, you know, approve it permanently. I would be uncomfortable with that until we really know um, because based on on his conviction, then he should have um, I understand that he's appealing it. Okay. Um, you have two people listed as uh, speaking for you, uh, Kevin Rocha and Joseph Hall. Um, Kevin, would you, you uh, have something there to share with us? Yes, I am, I'm Jason's boss at work. You know, Jason has um, since his release, he started working shortly after his release from prison, um, and I just wanted to speak on his behalf. Um, you know, I, I, I see him, we work together a lot. Um, you know, he seems real sincere about the case and, you know, everything that he's going through. Uh, you know, he, he's a really hard worker. Uh, he seems to have a genuine personality. Um, he's, you know, very upfront with what happened uh, to me anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just here to, to say that, you know, um, I believe that, uh, you know, he isn't a threat to, to the community. Um, you know, if it was possible, I'd him over for Thanksgiving dinner, you know, um, with my family. Um, so, I, I mean, that's all I have to say. You know, I, I feel he's a stand-up guy. And, uh, he's been doing everything that he need, he should be doing. Um, you know, he works works really hard, and um, I, think, I think he has a good character. So that's all I have to say. And what, what is the place of employment, sir? Uh, it's called Fighter Tech. Tech. I'm sorry, please repeat. Fighter, Fighter Tech. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joseph Hall, um, uh, we have you listed it also. Okay, Joseph. Uh... Joseph Hall, I see your, your name on there. You're muted if, if uh, you'd like to speak on behalf of Jason Hall. I've asked him to unmute. I don't know if he can hear me. I have a, a question. So, um, so you also have five years of, um, of supervision. Are you yeah. meeting? Are you meeting with a probation officer? He. Yes, um, but the one I was meeting with just found a different job. So I received a phone call also yesterday from my new probation officer. But yes, I am meeting with probation. And are, have they asked you to, to follow 
certain rules? Yes, and I have them. And how often do you meet with your probation officer? Every two weeks. And uh, the one that just quit uh, did do a home visit here where I just moved to. All right. Well, since we uh, can't get uh, Joseph Hall to, to unmute and, and uh, speak with us, uh, I'll ask if there's a motion regarding uh, Mr. Hall's uh, application. Yes, I'll make a motion that we uh, extend it for, let's say, 90 days. Okay. And we have a second? Second. All right. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the application. I, just to, to clarify, uh, that's address specific? Address specific. I was going to say that 425 Fifth Street. Address specific for a period of 90 days, at which time uh, we would ask you to return uh, with update regarding your appeal. Uh, I will do my best. Well, let us vote I will on be, first. I, okay. I will, uh, yeah. all, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Passes unanimously. So. All right. We'll see you in 90 days, sir. Yes. Next, we have the uh, appeal of Jared Cole uh, to move to 521 South Oakland. Department 2 address specific, and this is also a, uh, a return visit. Uh, you were here in August, and uh, we asked for a uh, to see uh, the evaluation of your, your program, of your progress. Uh, we did receive a letter, and uh, I'd ask if uh, uh, members of the board have had a chance to review that, and if they've got any questions or concerns based on that. I do not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cole, I'd ask you to uh, share with us anything uh, since we saw you last time. Uh, since the last time I was here, um, I have been promoted to assistant manager. I've gone to treatment. Uh, I've been to treatment twice now. Um, and I've been an active participant in the treatment. Uh, it's all through Zoom. Yeah, I'll ask you and appreciate you if you want to speak to us about your treatment, what's going on. Do you want to do that in open session here or would you rather do it privately? I'll, I'll do it publicly. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, I was uh, evaluated to take SOT1 uh, with uh, Hanger, I believe, Hanger Enterprises. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I've got a vehicle now. Uh, my credit score is going up uh, actually really decently uh, because of all the hard work I've put in. Uh, I am working full time at a car wash as an assistant manager, and I'm making 45 to 50 hours a week. Okay. And I see that uh, Donna Cole is here to speak. I assume on your behalf, ma'am. Is that uh, is that correct? We need you to unmute yourself, please. There we go. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> um, yes, I am his grandmother, and I have watched his progress, and we are very close. Um, and he has gone from, uh, you know, Shano, I guess it is, and uh, he got a job within three weeks, and he got an apartment within eight weeks. And he got a car a month after that. He was promoted, and he's done all of this in a very short period of time. And I feel, again, like I had said in the last meeting, that he is not a danger to society. Um, he is doing very, very well, and uh, I'm very proud of him and his success. Um, and I feel very comfortable if he was to be released um, and I would back him 100%. Okay. Uh, Pete or Faye, any questions? None here. Mm -hmm. No, no. 
All right, then you had been approved uh, for 90 days, as I said, back in August, and so you're currently at the, uh, the Open Street address? Correct. Okay. So is there a motion uh, regarding Mr. Cole's application to continue at that address? I will move address specific that Mr. Cole be approved. All right, and I'll second that. Uh, so we've had a uh, move to uh, approve address specific to 521 South Oakland Avenue, apartment two. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Uh, good luck to you, Mr. Cole. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Next, we have the application of uh, Bruce. Is it pronounced for Hay? I, I, I want to make sure I pronounce your name properly. Sir. Uh, uh, for Hay. For Hay, with the G. Thank you. Uh, yes. 1331 Division. Uh, and we see that uh, you are here, here with your crew for 90 days at the time. And we asked for treatment documentation. We received a letter on October 20, 20th regarding that. There's also a notation about uh, speaking to your dad. Is, is he with you here today? Is, is he on? Uh, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Is that, would that be Ray? Yes. Okay. Um, before we go to that, uh, why don't you tell us how it's been going for you for the last 90 days? Well, um, well first of all, I want to thank you for giving me these past 90 days to get it set up with my dad in Green Bay. I wrote everything down so I wouldn't forget all the things I've done. At the last meeting, you told me to do these three things, continue my counseling program, be a part of the community, and make new male friends. You have the summary report from Steve, my therapist, and part of the change. Based on what my past therapist told me after I discharged, I transferred my treatment to Steve. I enjoy talking to Steve. Bruce, uh, Bruce, I'm, Bruce I'm gonna just interject here. Before you start talking about the treatment, are you okay yes. to do it publicly or do you wanna go private when you talk about the treatment? Oh, public is okay. Thank you, okay, proceed then. Um, you have the summary report from Steve, my therapist, I can change. Based on what my past therapist told me after I discharged, I transferred my treatment to Steve. I enjoy talking to Steve. He helps me stay calm and figure out how to move safely along Green Bay using the bus and going to places like the Micah Center and the Gathering Place. I want to do the right thing. I have gone to the doctor for a wellness checkup. The doctor gave me medicine to help me with my asthma. I have a membership at Planet Fitness to stay healthy. I walk as much as I can and have a bus pass for longer trips. I got the address on my identification card changed to Green Bay. I pay my dad rent and help him along the house. I continue to be a member of Green Bay Zen Center, my faith community. I like helping out and socializing. I help out at a one-day silent retreat, October 17th. During the first part, I spent time at the Micah Center. I learned an African game called Mancala. I like to socialize with people there. I look uh, my favorite artists on a computer like Kandinsky, Louise Nelson, and other abstract and objective artists. <coughs> I like to help out carrying boxes upstairs, clean the bathrooms, and other things they need done. Now I'm spending more time at the gathering place. I like to socialize and listen to music. I really like the groups. I attend the weekend and review smart recovery device self moving forward and our journey to name a few. I talk about 
He talked about presenting, preventing self-sabotage, personal goals, and a support network. In the last several weeks, I've been getting really good at my volunteer position there. I make coffee, clean up, check the bathrooms, and greet newcomers and socialize with everyone. Thank you. Um, this time, I will uh, I will ask uh, for uh, Mr. Raverhay if you if you would like to uh, offer your comments, please. <clears throat> yes, Bruce, uh, Bruce lives with me, and uh, he seems to be doing really well. Uh, he apparently has many things to do because he leaves and uh, goes and does them. But Bruce and I get along really good. Uh, he helps around the yard, mows the grass, rakes leaves, and such. Cleans in the house. Okay. Hey, anything else then, sir? That's about it. Okay, thank you. Um, I, uh, that uh, a uh, Stephen D'Antonio, Antonio, uh, Chris Conley, and a Lynn Heyer had uh, uh, registered as speakers. Are any of those folks here with us this afternoon? comes up once in a while when I need to use it. Like uh, about a week ago, I seen a kid on TV that was more than one hour. So I, by the way, took out my uh, ammonia, sniffed it, and let my reasons not to be a fan. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm having to, lose, to use it less and less. But whenever I need it, or use it. Okay, thank yeah, you. My, my, my past therapist um, told me to um, use it only when I need it, because he don't want me sniffing ammonia all the time. He checked me about that a few times. Yeah. Okay, thank you much. I see uh, another person with you there. Is, is that uh, someone who wanted to speak on your behalf, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
Students wanted. Um, Would to you give us your name, please? Oh, Lynn Heyer. Lynn Heyer, and I'm um, I'm part of um, Bruce's Zen Green Bay Zen group, and I just wanted to say that he has really been working hard, um, especially at the gathering space where he goes to group daily, and then um, they really like him there, and a lot of the work that he does there is around keeping himself um, safe and understanding what kind of pitfalls he might have. Um, we, I've just been very impressed with him as a friend and personally that he's done some really hard work. So I just, I, I can't say enough. Um, he's just been very solid with us as a community member, very upfront with everybody, and he's very much stayed in integrity. So appreciate the time that you've given him. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, uh, do we have uh, anyone care to make a motion for uh, Mr. Gregg's uh, application for 1331 Division Street? I make a motion that we uh, approve address specific. Okay, and I'll second that. Uh, so we have a motion to approve 1331 Division Street address specific and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, do pass two to one. So, uh, Mr. Gray, you, you've been approved for 1331 Division Street, and uh, you receive uh, uh, confirmation of that in the mail. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. We move on to uh, the application of Miles Whitman for 531 South Van Buren. Is Mr. Whitman with us? I don't see the name on here. Ed, he is not on the call this evening. Okay, well, then. So uh, he had been approved for 90 days, asking for, for uh, how do we do this in the last time we didn't have somebody here? Um, Rachel, do we move to deny on a situation like this? They, when they don't appear, we typically um, move to deny because they, they aren't here to present to the board why they should be approved. Uh, in, in looking at the, uh, the documents, are, are there some issues with capacity on this gentleman that might have uh, been an issue for him to appear today? Well, I, I, I think that... Um, the reason for his not appearance is because he's in custody. Okay. Thank that you. Is, that is correct, Rachel. I verified with his PO. All right. And I'm going to make a motion to deny Mr. Whitman's application for 531 South Van Buren. I'll second. Specific. All right. Motion made and seconded. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Okay. Passed unanimously. Next, we have the application of Christopher Oatman applying to 1533 Lee Street. Mr. Oatman, are you with us? Yeah, there, there. it's Leo Street. Is that what you said? Uh, I had Lee. Is it? Oh, Leo. Uh, yeah, you're right. I can't read my own handwriting here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to ask you to uh, talk to us about your. your um, offense, uh, what you've been doing since then, uh, and, and treatment, and uh, I'll ask you right at the outset, when you speak about treatment, uh, do you want to speak in the public, or do you want it to be uh, in private? Yes, public is perfect. Okay, thank you. So, um, I'll ask you to just go ahead and tell us about your, your situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently living out uh, in, on Eastman Ave right now. And I'm trying, my, the neighborhood I don't, I live in is kind of uh, not a good place. So I've talked to my landlord about getting a different place. Right, not too long, about a year ago maybe, I've been here for a year, a year. And I'm just moving to a different area onto the west side. And just like I said, to get away from here and, and to a bigger place. So that's the only reason that I'm here today. I mean, I'm still, um, I don't know, did you get, receive my letter? I had called the uh, scanner, I think, this morning or something to see if 
I had dropped it off yesterday. I just got it from my uh, treatment provider. Yes, yeah, we did receive those. We received that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am on my uh, last, I'm doing my last homework right now, and I will be presenting that Thursday. And um, so I should be out of the finishing the group within, by the end of the year, maybe a couple weeks or whatever. And we won't be there for Thanksgiving or probably for Christmas and stuff. So. Um, about my case, uh, or my conviction, I was convicted in 2001 of first degree sexual assault. Um, I was living with my wife and her daughter at the time. I proceeded to go into my daughter's bedroom at that time and video record her and masturbate and show me masturbating in front of her with the camera. Um, I touched her buttocks and close to her vagina area and uh, kissed her leg. And she had ended up finding the video and watched it. And I believe she had told somebody at school and their, her friend or whatever was a police officer or something. So they ended up coming to my house and seizing all my stuff and searching myself. And uh, took me uh, to the jail. Okay. And uh, yeah, we, we've uh, we've seen here a, a, a few times, I, I see looking back at her still. Yeah. Uh, and you were you were approved each time by the looks of it, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have no no problem with her living with these and landlords and stuff. I mean, pay my rent, I got you know, I got job and all that stuff, I go to treatment, so shows that though in uh, twenty twenty, uh, prior to your last move you were you were revoked. And when? Uh, it said you had, well, I'm looking at the one from uh, a year ago in September. Uh, where it said you had been staying at TLP. I guess this was before your move to Eastman Avenue. And it said that you had been yes. revoked just before then. Is that correct? No. I am on lifetime supervision, and I cannot get revoked. I had moved out, out, of, out of that place, and I lived at the TLP. Okay. All right. Any questions, Peter? Hey. None. I guess okay. My question is: Explain. So you're under life. You said you're under lifetime supervision, so you can't be revoked. Yes. Uh, they, they, if, I because I don't have. I did my time. I been. I did my discharge. So. As I said, they, the judge had given me four years in ten. I have done the fourteen years. I discharged from that. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, do we have a motion regarding Mr. Oldman's uh, application? Well, I'll move to uh, uh, approve 1533 Leo Street, address specific. I'll second it. All right. Moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Passes unanimously. And uh, Mr. Oatman, you received the confirmation in the mail. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Goodbye. Next, we have the application of appeal uh, of Mr. Blaine Peelin requesting to move to 914 Elizabeth Street. And uh, we did receive a letter uh, within uh, just, just recently from uh, Dr. Jim Drake, and uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to review that. Um, Mr. Peterson, are you there? Mr. Peterson, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Yes. Hi. Uh, so, uh, what we would, what we would do uh, is ask you to uh, talk to us about your fence generic and uh, uh, your treatment, and uh, I'd ask you that when we when you start to talk about your treatment, are you okay doing it in public, or would you rather be uh, in private? No, public's fine. 
Okay, then I would turn it over to you and uh, tell us what's going on. Talk to us about your, your offense and your treatment and uh, what, what's happening with you these days. Okay. To the first degree sexual assault of a 12 year old child, my stepdaughter at the time, with a read in offense of an eight year old child. And she was also my stepdaughter. And it occurred in 2005. And I had asked the 12 year old on two occasions to put lotion on my genitals and she did and on one occasion I had asked the eight year old to put lotion on my genitals and she did and I went through the court system and I made apologies in court to the best of my ability. I can't imagine to this day if they're ever going to recover from that because they just trusted me completely and for no other reason did they do that for me other than they had trusted me. And in school, I know they're taught stranger danger, and there lies the problem. I was not a stranger. I was someone they knew and they loved, and I broke all that for them. And I know that for the rest of their life, they're going to have some sort of trust issue with people because of that, just because I created that. When I went through treatment, my treatment took about a year with Jim Drake. I learned a whole lot about how to look at women because my aversion was two women and little girls and I looked at them as though they were sex objects but I've since learned that every one of them is someone's daughter, someone's mother, someone's grandmother, an aunt, a niece, everyone one of respect. Nobody deserves to be looked at like a sex object. And I learned that in treatment. And I learned to have empathy for my victims. And all I'm left that I can do for them is to constantly pray for them and hope that their lives run as normal as possible after the serious crime that I committed upon them. Um, Previously, I've been before the board and I've been approved to live wherever I needed to live. I lived at 2040 Preble for about seven years, went through about four different landlords. Finally, this last time when it got bought out, I got a 60 day notice, was asked to move. We were still in the COVID shutdown and I could not for the life of me find any place to move to. And so I ended up in hotels for about five months. And then now at the moment, I'm just in my car. I don't even have money for hotels anymore. The house at 914 Elizabeth, the man that owns it has been somebody that I've known for about 30 years. Originally went to church with him. I still attend Bible studies with him. His wife died a number of years ago. It's a three bedroom house. He's all alone there. I'll be residing there. I got a social security income nowadays. I don't work anymore. My, uh, I got a diseased liver. My kidneys are bad. I don't I have a car, but I don't do too much. Go to Bible study. I see my probation officer once a month, and I live a low key life. I don't, I don't do a whole lot. I, I don't think I would cause you any problem living in that neighborhood. It's 
Can I ask why they asked you to move out of the Preble Avenue apartments? They gave no reason, sir. They said they needed to renovate. They gave me 60-day notice, said they needed to renovate. Okay. And it's probably a 50-year-old duplex, and it wasn't in great shape when I moved in seven years ago. The landlord that gave it to me seven years ago was kind of a slumlord, and so nothing had really been updated in there. And then it had been vacant for almost a year, so one of the landlords had updated that one, but mine had never been renovated at all. Okay. So whether that was the truth or not, I don't know, but there's all the reasoning they gave me. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the board for Mr. Peterson? I just, have you completed treatment with Jim Drake? Oh, yes. I completed treatment in 2014, and I still see Jim Drake twice a month in aftercare. I never stopped seeing him. Okay. I wanted some clarification there, because he said, I continue to work with Mr. Peterson. Oh, yes. I continue to go to aftercare. I refuse to stop. Thank you. I think there's always something I can learn. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Peterson to 914 Elizabeth Street, address specific. I will second. All right. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And that passes unanimously. Mr. Peterson, you want us to send the confirmation to the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, sir, I would. Okay. Well, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. All right. All right. And we have the application, Tammy DeBeck to 423 South Van Buren Street, address specific. Are you with us here? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you've been before the board a number of times just within the last couple of years. If you would, just kind of give us a quick rundown on your offense and the treatment you've had, if you would like it public or private. Public is fine. Okay. Looks like it's only us anyway on here. All right. Right. So go ahead and talk to us about what happened and where you're at now. Okay. What happened, my crime happened twice. The first time was in December of 2014. And the second time it happened was February of 2015. I met a man that was like 36, I think. And he convinced me to have my child in the door frame and in the room while we had sex. And I fell for it like a fool. After the incident happened, I called the police the very next day, told them what happened. I called CPS and let them know what happened. And two days later, I got arrested and put in jail. I've thought about this to the point where I'm crying and stuff like I am now because it was my child that I inflicted this pain upon. I regret it and I will for the rest of my life. I feel like I've made or that I've committed a heinous, very heinous crime against my child. I put my child up for adoption while I was in prison because I took his safety away and I broke the trust that we had. We were really close. 
at the time and I broke it. And now he's, uh, from what I know, he's doing well and he's got a family that loves him. He's got everything that I could not give him. And where I'm at right now, I'm homeless temporarily, but I'm calling every landlord in in the bun to see about getting an apartment. I have a fiance now who loves me and supports me and doesn't judge me for my actions in the past. And, and he's the one who has 423 South Van Buren? What was that? Is he at 423 South Van Buren? He will be. Okay, okay. Um. I'm looking for a place for both of us. I have an interview, my second interview, over at Meyer Grocery Store tomorrow at noon. They sound like they're very interested in hiring me, which is really good, because I do need a job. So your last address was on Lincoln Street, is that correct? It was. I was living with my best friends, and they illegally evicted me. They gave me a five-day pay or vacate, and I chose to vacate. When did that happen, Tammy? That happened, so I moved out September, well, they gave me the, the notice August 30th of 21. I moved out the 3rd of September, finished moving out on the 4th. And put my store, uh, put my belongings at my brother's storage, and then he filed the landlord filed um, eviction papers on me on September first. But I was already out, and I went to court on the twenty first of September, and he did not show up. But it's on my record as an eviction. I stayed there too long. I got under their skin and I, I wore out my welcome there. Now we're no longer friends. I, in this time that I've been out of prison, I got, I got sentenced eight and a half years, three and a half in prison and five on paper. And then I have to register, I think for 10 or 15 years. But in all this time that um, I've been out, I, you know, it's been like two and a half years. It'll be three, February 19th of 2022 that I've been out. I have not reoffended. I have not looked at children. I don't even care for children now because of what I did to my child. Um, but, uh, I, how do I say this? Um, it's been very hard for me to find a place, to find a landlord that would rent to me knowing that I'm a sex offender. Mm -hmm. I've been in treatment with Jim Drake since September 19th of, 19, of 2019. Um, I continue to see him one, I, whether it's on the phone or in person, once a week. Um, he's got a letter for me. I haven't gotten it yet. But um, I, when, when I'm off a of paper, I do plan on continuing to see him because I need it. And I feel that he's got information that would benefit me. In the long run, it will benefit me. Um, he's he's a very wise man. He's caring and um, he doesn't he doesn't sugarcoat things. And I honestly, truly believe that going to prison was the best thing for me. It got my act together, and now I'm able to talk to my other child. Um, who is 21 now. He's in prison himself, but at least I still have that connection with him. Okay. Any questions um, for uh, Mr. Beck? No. Yes, I have a question. Did you say that you're engaged? 
I am. I've been engaged for over a year. When do you plan on getting married? That we haven't decided yet, but um, as soon as we get a place, maybe we can go ahead and do that. Okay, thank you. I have, I have, have fiancé, and I have a great support system with my family and, you know, I mean, I don't have friends. I lost all my friends because of my actions. But the only person I have in my life are my family members. Okay, thank you. All right. Do we have a motion regarding Mr. Beck's uh, application and appeal? I will move and address specific for approval. Okay. I'll second. All right, motion made and seconded uh, to approve her request to move to 423 South Van Buren Street, address specific. All in favor say aye. 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 And that, uh, that passes unanimously. And uh, Mr. Beck, you want us to send the uh, uh, confirmation to that address? If I get my mail over at Wellspring, so can you send it there? Uh, do, we have, do we have that address on? I do not have that address. I can give Tammy a call in the morning to get the address okay. from Okay, okay, fine. It's okay. 4 it, this is 413 Bouncement Avenue and the zip is 303. Okay. Well, good luck to you. I hope you get that job in higher. And, uh, I do too. I'm so excited for the interview. Okay, good luck. Thank you. All right, bye now. Bye. All right, that brings us to the end of our regular business. Uh, our next meeting date is December 15th at four o'clock. And if there's no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Before, before we leave, I just want to give a reminder that before we um, present motions um, in the future, we should have discussion just so that we build a record as far as what factors um, board members are considering before proposing the motion. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. So just a, just a reminder. Thank you, Ed, for uh, filling in this evening. Yes. You're Thank welcome. you, Ed. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Ed. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, motion to adjourn? I'll second. Make a motion. And second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.